So, once again, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. You shouldn't just, uh, you know, thou shalt not rape. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not hit. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not lie. But I would like to think that we can agree on the big things, right? And then that goes equally so for children. Horror details emerged in the murder of a five-year-old girl after her mother and her boyfriend were charged with her death. So that's her mother. That's her actual mother. Emily Canales, little Emily Canales, had died in the hospital in January with her death ruled as a homicide caused by multiple blunt force injuries. Blunt force. So what they use? A bludgeon? Would they use a baseball bat? Brianne Escamilla, 27, the child's mother, her boyfriend, Matthew Urias, uh, U-R-I-A-S, Urias, Urias, Escamilla, E-S-C-A-M-I-L-L-A. So you got Brianne and Matt, right? Oh, Brianne and Matt. And what were Brianne and Matt doing? Well, they're arrested and charged with first-degree murder on June 28th. Of a five-year-old. Urias was arrested on June 29th. While S. Camilla was taken into custody on July 5th in Littleton, Colorado. Both are being held in the El Paso County Jail. Could face additional charges. A police affidavit. A police affidavit obtained by the Colorado Gazette. Suggested the young girl suffered at least 20 blunt injuries. In the lead up to her death. 20 blunt injuries. 20 times. They thought it was okay to hit a little five-year-old girl where they just whacking her in the head and they just got carried away, kept on whacking her, huh? She wouldn't eat her green beans, so they just, hey, sit there and eat your green beans and then getting whacked and eat your green beans and then go do the dishes and then go do the, go do all the tobacco work, a bunch of migrant, is that what they were doing? She allegedly sustained severe injuries including lung contusions, rib fractures, several different hemorrhages. Rib fractures, so what are they doing? Kick her in the side, punch her in the side. The affidavit revealed the girl's head was shaved at the time of her death. They shaved her head. You shave your head, like, I think of chemotherapy. I think of Britney Spears, right? When you're, I guess she was trying to, or to uh, humiliate them. They allegedly imposed as a punishment. Right, to humiliate. Both reportedly admitted to the abuse during several rounds of interviews following their arrest. Two days prior to her death, it's believed that Emily started to complain about stomach issues to her mother in Urias. A day later, she began fainting. Her mother allegedly dismissed her daughter's police, suggesting the girls being dramatic. Yeah, I remember getting my arm broken. It feels like my arm's broken. Ah, quit being a baby. And what sucks is like when something's broke or, you know, somebody, there's someone had their finger cut off. You gotta, you gotta replace that as quick as possible. You might, even if you were to replace it immediately, there's still going to be some, it's not going to be perfect. But if you just sit it on ice and then wait a week later, she's got stomach issues. I knew a one woman who the tiniest little thing, you know, you want to like. Get mad at some people that are kind of like too much, but you got pieces of shit like this. Give me the too much. They, um, she had a sniffle. The kid had a sniffle and they took her to the hospital just to be sure, just to be sure. And you know what? That's, uh, to be on the safe side. Yeah, that's better to be on the safe side. And then look at her. Look at the mother. I just feel like, um. Is it jealousy? I mean, why would you why would you attack a little kid and keep attacking a little kid? Hitting them in the ribs, hitting them with blunt force. She fainted again, falling unconscious, prompting the two parents to fall, call 911. Yeah, yeah, they accidentally kicked her in the stomach and then that was it. She had internal bleeding and she needed to go to the hospital. But then they're like, oh man, if we go to the hospital, you know, people are going to know that uh, we kicked her in the stomach or whatever they did. Punched her in the stomach. Took a baseball bat. Who knows? They called January 13th. And then they said that the girl had died later that day. But she was complaining about stomach pains. At least from what we know.
what was it on the 11th they said or two days prior yeah two days prior so for two days Escamilla allegedly told cops that Urias would abuse Emily by picking her up by the ears and ribs. It, picking her up by the ears? What the fuck? She also claimed Urias smacked Emily's head three times in the bathroom. Was it a smack or a whack? According to my mother, a smack, a whack is not an attack. A, a smack... Smacked Emily's head three times in the bathroom. Would regularly say it would be easier if Emily wasn't there. So, yeah, I guess uh, she needed to keep uh, her mans around, huh? She needed to keep her mans around, so... She once saw Emily playing outside without a coat during cold weather. And then she wants to say, oh, it's him. He, he did it all. How many times did he do it? And you watched? You didn't say nothing? Is it more important to have a man than it is to be a good mother? Is that is that what you're trying to say? Clearly. Emily's biological father, Manuel Canales, lives in El Paso, Texas. Described the heartbreak. She's just a beautiful little girl. She always said hi to everybody. Always wanted to talk to everybody. I'm still in denial. I don't, I'm still in denial. Like, I don't want to believe this. They questioned why the girl was without sufficient clothing. The girl reportedly told the concerned neighbor that her mother had locked her out of the apartment on purpose. So for some kind of punishment, oh, we're going to get you to submit. We're going to get you to submit. I don't remember going. I didn't have a coat. Or a hat or any sunblock make on the tobacco setter. This has ruined my life. I haven't been able to focus or work or do about anything. Yeah, man. R.I.P. to uh, Emily. So not only... That's abusers hate love. Abusers hate love. And here's, I just wrote Emily Canales and images and just random images of her. But there is, I'm guessing that's probably her biological father that's, you know, holding her and hugging her and just absolutely adores her. And then this, this is the victim. This is. R.I.P. to Emily Canales. It does. It does. It has to be surreal. It has to be absolutely surreal. I remember I saw this one video. It was in Haiti and it was crazy. It was chaotic. There's a, They have a bunch of busy streets and there's this big uh, truck that was driving by. This big truck drove by and like a Mack truck and it went out of control. And it wound up hitting a kid. And everybody else, I think, might have hit somebody else. But basically, what you see in the middle of the road was everybody stopped. And you got one father huddled around his dead child. Like, what just happened? No, hold on. What happened? We were going to the store. We were going to do this. Wait, no, what, what just happened? And then, you know, you're supposed to... Used to always go to the biological mother, but my, you know, grandmother was terrible. So I wish Bitten, Ralph Bitten, Deaton, the uh, grandfather, instead we had Barbara Williams. I wish the grandfather was in the life, was it was the one that was in my life. Instead, it's like when one is in the in your life, your child's life or whatever, then the other one isn't. Sometimes you could have two good, healthy families and they get like two Christmases, right? Or you could have one good, healthy person and the other person was lucky to be with that person instead of realizing how lucky they were to be with that person. Instead, and I wonder if it's jealousy. Why would you? Because you need a man so goddamn much. You don't need a man in America at all. You don't need a man in America. You can get on food stamps and WIC, and I think there's like a whole bunch of stuff for mothers and children. You don't need a man. You choose to be with the man. You choose to be with the man. You don't need him. You, in your head, maybe like...
So, yeah, RIP to Emily Canales and uh, to the father, that, that sucks. She was loved, but I think that's that's what, what abusers hate. Abusers hate somebody who is loved. And so, yeah, five-year-old Emily would go to one household where she's, you know, on top of the world. And then go to a, an abusive household. And I wonder how many times. So, Brian, Brianne, Matthew, you two are pieces of shit. You two are pieces of shit. Picking her up by her ears. Picking her up by her ribs. Coroner's office concluded June 14th, the January death of Canales was a homicide outlined the heavy abuse she had suffered. Lung contusions, extensive contusions, abrasions, rib fractures, several different hemorrhages. Her hair was shaved off at the time of her death as punishment by her mother. So they're sending her out in the cold, they're shaving her head. Man, that, that five-year-old must have been a hellion on wheels. That five-year-old... You know, I, w I just want to live in a in America where we don't, you know, the big things. Don't rape, don't murder, don't steal, don't hit. Those are big ones. Don't torture, don't enslave. But what was the abusers? They were just annoyed. They were just annoyed. What was their issues? What was their problem? She needed water and then she needed food. And then what? Help with her homework? With her uh, accountant of the money? She, she needed help with her homework? She wanted someone to talk to her? Is that, was that the thing that pushed him over the edge? Food, water, help with her homework? My God, now she wants us to acknowledge she's a human and talk to her like she's a person? She wants us to be mature adults that she can relate to and talk to. She wants to talk to people that actually have concern for her. Can you, can you believe... You know, this is... Why has this happened? Part of me wants to say, what the fuck? To everybody, but the other part is, it's really, it is just these people. Because they're getting arrested and they're going to, you know, get... They're going to serve time for what they did. Canales, Emily Canales fainted several times, complaining of stomach issues. Urias told detectives that he told Escamilla they should call for an ambulance and he was worried about Emily Canales, but Escamilla told him that she was being dramatic and she thought Urias was also being dramatic. Everybody's just being dramatic. Everybody's just being dramatic. What is the pride cometh before the fall? Despite the described decline in health in multiple instances of fate in both Urias and Escamilla admitted to police they continued to hit and abuse Canales throughout the two days leading up to her death. Urias admitted to spanking Canales even on the day of her death, something he told detectives I regret it 100%. They both said that the other one was the primary abuser. Escamilla told detectives at one point it was her fault Emily Canales was dead because she had smacked Emily's head three times in the bathroom. Fuck child abusers. I can't stand child abusers. I can't stand sadistic, evil motherfuckers who want to hurt other people. I can't stand it. The affidavit states that Escamilla also told officers that Canales would punch and injure herself, which could explain the injuries. Oh, okay. Well, you know that Emily, she went around just uh, terrorizing the neighborhood, huh? Was just doing all the big crimes against everybody. She was a hellion on wheels. Couldn't stop the, the damn crime sprees. And then on top of all the crimes that little five-year-old Emily would do, little five-year-old Emily would punch and injure herself too.
Urias arrested June 29th. Escamilla was taken into custody a few days later, July 5th, both without incident. Both are scheduled to make their first appearances in Colorado's 4th Judicial District Court next week. Urias on Tuesday, Escamilla on Wednesday. Urias and Escamilla are both being held in the El Paso County Jail on suspicion of first-degree murder with the chance of additional charges being filed before their appearances in court next week. I, I don't understand any of this. They couldn't respect the five-year-old, but they're respecting the police. So they're telling the police, you know, and she said that she did it. So at the very least, that's negligent homicide. There's vehicular homicide, manslaughter, negligent homicide, and first and second degree murder. Those are the five murder charges in Colorado. I think wicked people, there's plenty of reasons. I think jealousy is a motherfucker. Jealousy is a motherfucker. If people aren't loved well enough, then they'll be jealous. And they'll be jealous of people that are that are loved. And if you weren't loved, then somebody else is being loved. That's Cain and Abel, right? Cain took Abel away since God favored Abel. Now, God could be better. Why would you favor, you know, a sheep over farm goods? That I'm just saying. I'd like to think that there's enough good in the world that we can conquer the evil. It's just that this shit happens so freaking much. And right now, Missouri is thinking about hitting kids, the school, the public school system is thinking about bringing violence into the, as if the entire goddamn system, it's a hierarchical system, if they're considering bringing violence, that's because they know that their, their bullshit system, it's a house of cards and they, they can only keep their house of cards up with the use of violence if your idea requires the use of violence then in order to convince others that it's right, then your idea ain't worth a shit. An idea should be able to convince you, and that's it. A threat of violence about right behind the thing. Shaving her head off, putting her out in the cold. Why? Because her actual father in Texas loved her and gave a shit about her, so she had that little bit of confidence about herself that, you know... She's worth more than what they were doing, treating her. And then they detected it. How dare you think that you're, well, you think you're better than us? No, I think I'm, I'm a little proud of myself because I'm, I'm loved. And they had, you know, they had each other, whatever, the stepfather or whatever, and the mother. But two grown ass adults just keep hitting a kid. Not one is telling the other not what to do, and the other one's not telling the other what to do. Nobody's nobody's speaking up for the truth or for righteousness. Nobody is saying let's get justice. Nobody's quoting Martin Luther King. Nobody's talking about getting a right to vote or having a civil society, a civic civil society, actually making this democratic republic function, having a. An agrarian society. Twenty six and twenty seven years old. So I, I mean, I, I can, I'll just end off with this because I feel like I could just go on and on about how fucking fucked this is. But ultimately, life is precious. Life is so freaking precious. When he was talking about picking them up with the with, by the ribs, is he picking her up like this by the ribs? Is that what she's saying? Because picking them up by the ears, I don't even understand picking up by the ears. How does your ear not rip off? Aren't you? Um, I remember my uh, abuser grandma Barbara Williams would bend my ear. It's like she didn't know I was a person. Like she didn't know I was a human being that had, you know, had all the same. Essential, you know, everything is her. Food, water, clothing, emotions, eyeballs, fucking, I, you got ears, I got ears. Do you like it? Can I, maybe I should have tugged on her ear. But, um, abusers are so fucked up because life is so fragile and so precious. 
and all abusers want to do is just get compliance. And there's something about a human that once you get going, you just kind of keep going. And so I think you you got to keep that in mind and you got to keep yourself in check. And maybe the reason why we put our kids in their own rooms isn't so that they grow up individualistic, which is a part of it, but we put them in their own rooms so that way we don't get it to them so they can at least have a chance at living, at least that they, you know, they won't be annoying me with, you know, them just living by themselves in here. So why are people evil? I think sadism, I think jealousy. There is a, I did say I was going to say one last thing, but you know what? I'm going to keep on going because I think this is actually really important. There's a, a lot of times people want to pick sides and I think it's important actually to pick sides with the victims, right? In this case, the RIP to Emily, you know, um, Can, Canales, Calales, whatever. But uh, clearly, Americans need to, we need guidance. We need to talk about how to raise children and what's the best way to raise children. What's the best practices? When I talk about Maslow, Piaget, and Vygotsky, because these are theorists about child development, I, I shouldn't feel like there's something off about because I have a theory, because I thought about how to raise children, and there's, no, you all never thought about it. You just had sex, now you popped out a kid, and now you're just trying to do the best that you got. Okay, I understand, but you didn't plan, and you don't have space, and you didn't think about how you would have liked to have been raised if you would have had that chance. You just w jumped out of the frying pan and straight into the fryer. So you just went from one, you know, kind of tough situation to another tough situation and it might you might not ever be able to break out of that cycle of violence so i was just uh life is precious and um uh, it's just uh, yeah life is precious life is precious whenever you have when you have a baby i've raised a couple of puppies so I, I'd like to think that uh, I'm, you know, I raised some plants, I raised some puppies, so I'm ready to raise a family. But um, when you raise a puppy, they're 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 not very smart. They don't have their eyes open. They don't know what they're doing. They need their mother. They need to be fed. They need warmth. They need food, water, clothing. They need space. They're gonna piss and shit, so they're gonna need to, you know, have space to do that. And you're gonna have to clean it up, and you're gonna have to. Make sure the mother has all the food, water, and clothing, and shelter, and security. I mean, how the hell are you going to you know, nurse without security? You're going to have to have security. So you're going to have to have your Maslow's hierarchy of needs and check into Piaget and Vygotsky because they all apply with, um, with dogs as well as humans too. There's a cognitive development, and then there's uh, the zone of proximal development. The, the ones that know how to catch the Frisbee can teach the ones that don't know how to catch the Frisbee. And, um, get serious. You got a baby, get serious. It's not about you anymore. If anything, you should put yourself on the back burner. And, uh, Maria Montessori says, follow the child. You want to know how to raise your child? Ask them, Hey, what do you need? What do you want? And not only do they need the basics, but they're going to need health care and education too. And they're going to run their own households. Eventually you're going to raise them up to be 18 years of age. They're going to find themselves a spouse, raise some kids, get a career, Maybe not. Maybe they won't, you know, be in a family, but they're going to have to get a career in America. So you got to, you know, orient them. You got to guide them. But it doesn't have to be a terroristic fucking dictatorship nonstop. Yeah, it doesn't have to be awful. You know, I offered my abusers, hey, come on out here and I'll treat you the exact way you all treated me. And they didn't rush right on out here. That's interesting. I mean, why not? You know, all the goodwill you showed me as a youngster, as a youth, I'll show you all. So, the last thing I want to mention is, uh, I was just, I come across this point, and I think it's actually a brilliant point. We do need to care about the victims first. You know, fuck these two assholes, and I think keep them in jail. And uh, really think about uh, capital punishment. I think lifetime in jail, possible capital punishment, get a jury to look at it if it's as it seems. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. They couldn't stop themselves. And she's five years old. So that means she was more resilient than a newborn, right? So, I mean, how hard are they? Are they doing drop kicking her? What the hell are they doing? Like, God damn. So I was trying to make a point just in general to a buddy of mine. And I was saying that 
We need to care about the Black Panthers first. We need to care about Martin Luther King first. We don't need to rush out and care about J. Edgar Hoover and Nixon and Kissinger and all these, you know, terrible, awful, authoritarian oppressors. We need to care about the victims, so that those that they hurt. But, while I, I believe that and that's totally true, I'm wondering if we did fix J. Edgar Hoover and we did fix Nixon or Donald Trump, if they did, if they were loved enough and they didn't want to turn their, you know, vicious rage and anger out on the rest of us, we actually would save a lot more people. So, yes, pick the victim up, dust them up, pick them back up and get them walking again. This Emily is dead, so she's never going to get to walk and justice is an eye for an eye. I think um, she's never going to get to experience anything ever again. She's forever young. It's a five-year-old. And it's up to the biological father to remember every little thing about her because, you know, it's just going to be, she, she just learned this number, or that number, and she got this word, you know, messed up with that word. But that's that's who she was. She had a spirit. Emily Canals was on this planet, and she was destined to do way more than what she did. She could have cured cancer. She could have walked on Mars. Come up with a cure for COVID. Could have became... Governor, Prime Minister, I don't know. But they took everything away from her. And so, should we make sure that these two have plenty of love? We should have made sure they had plenty of love before this had got to this point. We need to care about society. And I don't... If they serve, I'd be okay with life in jail. I don't like the idea of having to pay for their their meals and their electricity and their their showers but that's a punishment and there's a presence of justice there but for society right an abuser says hey don't look me in the eye boy don't do this don't do that right and then immediately you're supposed to correct yourself but when hey abuser stop abusing kids they don't do that hey abusers be a good mother father they don't do that but they expect an immediate correction and then uh, does society work? So you have immediate correction. They've been arrested. They're out of you know out, out of society. They're in jail right now, and they're gonna. I think the conviction will probably be. The prosecutor uh, dropped the ball if he doesn't get a conviction on this one because it's clear to me, and I'm not even part of the. Anyways, we do need to care about the Black Panthers first. We do need to care about the Fred Hamptons of the world. We do need to care about the Stokely Carmichael's and the Martin Luther Kings of the world. We do need to care about those that J. Edgar Hoover victimized. But I think we should consider that if J. Edgar Hoover wasn't a fucking psycho, well, I guess, you know, what What? What the fuck turned J. Edgar Hoover into J. Edgar Hoover? What made him the way that he was? But, um, yeah, we need to love the Black Panthers first, but once the Black Panthers, you've pick them up, dust them off, and they're, you know, up and walking. Then we can have the conversation about picking up J. Edgar Hoover. What the fuck is your problem, man? What the hell is your problem, man? You're a racist piece of shit. You're a bigoted piece of shit to the core of your being, to the marrow of your bones. The FBI, you need a police agency, so the whole idea of wearing suits and nice shiny shoes and all this other shit, you know, that's a good, good trend, good style. But he wrote personally. J. Edgar Hoover personally wrote a letter to Martin Luther King. And people says, oh, you know, Sam, <laughs> Sparham Broward. People say, told me to kill myself earlier this morning. He wrote the letter. He's the fucking head of the FBI. You weren't the head of the FBI. One of the, you know, premier institutions in America. You're not the chief, the head, and write a letter. Dear Martin Luther King, I can't find <laughs> any dirt on you. Uh, but uh, you might change America and you might get us integrated and you might actually fix this country and um, why don't you kill yourself? Why don't you just kill yourself? Because uh, you're at your wit's end, you have no other fucking options and then the fact that you thought that, what did you think that that was going to accomplish? <laughs> Jagger Hoover needed 